So Peter goes out fishing with the guys all night long. A guy on the shore sees them and says, hey, have you caught anything? And they're looking up, nope. And this person on the shore, who happens to be Jesus, somehow they don't recognize him, says, hey, throw the net on the other side, all right? Brothers and sisters, may the Lord give you his peace. Father Malachi, coming to you again here from Matagalpa, Nicaragua, a joy to be with you. I have this memory from when I was a kid growing up, which was going out with my dad fishing. Uh, we do it all the time, actually. I mean, we were like fishing, hunting, camping, outdoors, anything was a part of my life. And I love it, loved it. And thank God for the gift that it has been to me to be able to have been so close to nature. And we go fishing with my dad sometimes out to a lake that was near our house in Augusta, Georgia. And one of the things that was cool is we go out there and we'd spend the night sometime just camping, set up lanterns along the shoreline and set our poles out in the bobbers, you know, with the worms or whatever we're fishing with at that time. Stink bait if it's catfish, oh, that stuff is nasty. But I remember many times not catching anything. <laughs> and like at the end of it, we're like packing up and we had a great time, right? It was like ate a bunch of junk food, hung out all night by a campfire, watched our bobbers sit there and kind of get excited when it looked like maybe there was a bite. But then at the end of that, when we we're going home and my dad would turn and look at his like, well, sons, I told you guys we were going fishing. Didn't say we were going catching. And I remember that. Remember that as I was reading the gospel the other day. And there's one of my favorite lines in all of the Gospel of John, and it, and it comes in at the end, actually, from Peter, right? I mean, I love that guy in general. But Peter, after the resurrection, after the crucifixion, he's with his buddies. They're up by the Sea of Galilee, and he's standing there on the shore, and he says something so simple. He says, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. And they're like, well, let's go with you, too. And I can remember so many times as well, like at high school, buddies would call me up like, hey, dude, we got a storm coming through, man. Let's get down to the river right now. And we'd run down there as soon as the storm passes, throw your lines in, and they would be hitting hard. The fish everywhere is awesome, right? So Peter, here he is. He's like, I'm, I'm going fishing. Something that he'd done so many times before. And the disciples, the other guys that are with him, are like, I I'm going to go with you too. And I imagine in some ways, it's like I'm going because I don't know what else to do. Maybe also because I just kind of like fishing. So Peter goes out fishing with the guys all night long. And sure enough, just like has happened earlier in the gospel and in the other gospels we read, they don't catch anything. They went fishing, not catching. Then all of a sudden, something interesting happens. What happens is, is a guy on the shore sees them and says, hey, have you caught anything? And they're looking up, nope. And this person on the shore, who happens to be Jesus, Somehow they don't recognize him. Mysteries, right? Says, hey, throw the net on the other side, all right? Now, if you've ever been a guy doing anything in your life and it's not going the way you want and you're like frustrated, like, like not working out, not catching fish, tried all the different types of lures, bait, went to all the different holes, didn't work out, and you're like at the end of that and somebody is like, hey, why don't you throw it on the other line? I could just imagine like interiorly, like what kind of frustration might have been there, right? For Peter and the guys like, hey, we've been here all night. We know what we're doing. And here you are telling me to throw it on the right side of the boat. Like we've been throwing it on the right, on the left, in the front, in the back. We've been out here all night, but they obey. They do what he says. They listen to Jesus. And all of a sudden, these nets are filled with too many fish for them to even be able to handle. And they're sitting here trying to drag it to shore. This abundance. And you know, here's the difference. It, it, the difference is, is that like, you know, with just my effort, just your effort, with just my resources, with just your resources, our talents, what we bring to the table, a lot of times we just go fishing. Jesus, when Jesus is welcomed in, when Jesus is brought into our lives, all of a sudden fishing becomes catching, becomes abundance, becomes this overflowing reality of how he makes all things new, how Jesus comes and changes reality by his presence, by his love. You know, I was talking to a buddy who just um, not long ago was looking for work, had been looking for months. And as we're talking about it, I just threw out the question, which was like, hey, um, have you prayed? Uh, <laughs> He's talked a lot about it. He's looked and did everything that he could, applied everywhere under the sun. 
And so I was like, hey man, like, let's pray. Let's pray for God to provide for you. And we prayed. It was a Thursday. And I get a message from him that literally the next Friday morning, my man wakes up with an email saying, hey, you received the job that you were applying for. And it's like, he's just absolutely overjoyed, overjoyed by this revelation of the presence of Jesus in a concrete way that showed him like, hey, like I see you, I know you, I love you, I'm with you. But too often, I think, my own experience is, is that we face the problems of life. We, we run after even our dreams and the things that we want to do on our own, on our own power, resources, talents. And we forget that like Jesus wants to come near us. And he wants to speak a word to us. And if we obey that word, if we will turn to him, if we'll invite him in, like then all of a sudden fishing becomes catching. And there is no greater joy, I'm telling you, if you're an angler, you know it. Like when that pole bends over, you're like, yeah, come on. I mean, this joy is this joy of experiencing the presence of God in our lives. And he wants that. He wants us to know that he's near. He wants us to know that he's with us. I mean, is it a guarantee that every time I say a prayer, the next day my prayer is going to be answered? Like, absolutely not. But is it a guarantee that every time I welcome Jesus into my life and my situation could be a problem in my family, could be a challenge in school, could be a challenge in my marriage, work, could be a, a particular fear, could be everything from addiction to mental health, to all sorts of struggles. There's lots of things you could be struggling with. But when we welcome Jesus into it, he changes the whole dynamic. He changes our hearts and we experience the abundance of his presence and his love. You know, Peter and those disciples are just absolutely in awe and in awe of witnessing the risen Lord showing his presence to them in this awesome catch of fish. And the fact of the matter is, brothers and sisters, we weren't made just for fishing. We're made for catching. So I'm hoping, I'm praying for you, praying for my own life, that we'll welcome Jesus we will welcome Jesus in, that we'll listen to the voice as he speaks to us, that we'll obey that voice. And we won't say like Peter did, I'm going fishing. We're gonna say, I'm going catching.